Let's come together for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we want to say thank you for another beautiful Sabbath day. A high Sabbath, that is, Lord, it's Sabbath of the camp meeting. And Lord, I come before you just wanting to say thank you that you are very present help in time of need and that we can call upon your name to supply every deficiency, every lack and want. Lord, I need you now and my brothers and sisters here need you. We need the Holy Spirit to illuminate our minds and hearts. We don't have much time to comprehend what needs to be done, as we should. So please, Lord, wake our minds up. Help us to hear from you. I need you, Lord. There's so many things firing in my brain right now. I need your help. I need your divine assistance. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> That's why you do it. Uh, would you turn with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 12, please? Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. And we're going to pick up in verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. I have to be honest with you this morning. <laughs> Not to say I haven't been honest with you before. <laughs> I believe we're in a war. I believe you believe that we're in a war. Um, but I don't believe we know as fully uh, the weapons that God has given us to actually engage in this war and to take advantage of it. It's like having a nuclear uh, bomb in our arsenal, but it's just sitting in the closet. And the enemy, he has the same thing, but he's using it mightily. And in my mind, as I'm, as we're about to talk here, um, I'm trying to gather my thoughts to help us to see what God wants to get across in our mind and that is that we are in a great war right now and Satan is trying to keep you from understanding what's in your arsenal. Are you with me? Yeah. Revelation chapter 12. Let's read verse 7 all together. Father, please thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, verse 7, let's read that all together. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. We knew when this take place. We've been studying this for a long time. Verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth how much of the world? He was cast out in the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now let's read verse 10 all together. Remember now, there's going to be a response after this casting out of Satan uh, from the angels. They're going to bring you and I to the picture, okay? All right, let's read this all together. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and what? Strength and the kingdom of our God and the what? And the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is what? Cast down, which accuses them before God day and night. Verse 12. Therefore what? Rejoice ye heaven, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to who? To inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath. Why? because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Now, we've been learning, just as he knows, that we have a short time, don't we? 
Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Prior to coming here, I knew we had a short time. But after studying this week, I recognize it's shorter than what even what I thought. What about you? 20, 25 plus or minus? The devil knew that before we knew it. And guess what he has been working to keep you and I in, far as in our minds, far as being in darkness? That he has a short time to keep us in physical slavery. To keep us in what? Physical slavery in your bodies. He has a short time to keep you from being free and getting the power of God to have perfect self-control. He has a short time to keep you cherishing that thing you eat when no one else is looking. He has a short time to keep you from staying up late at night when you know we should be sleeping. He has a short time to keep you and I from obeying the precious laws of nature. This morning, we're going to be studying health reform, medical missionary work, and the what? And the real issue. I believe we need to understand the relationship between health reform, medical missionary work, and the real issue. I shouldn't have to ask you what the real issue at this camp meeting. Amen? Amen. So I'm asking you right now because I am sensing the urgency of God trying to get our attention to recognize we can't play anymore with our physical habits. We can't just think we're okay because we're singing and we're studying our Bibles, but we refuse to exercise. It's a necessity, saints. I wasn't planning on saying this this early. <laughs> but uh, the Lord says get, I need to, we need to get it out now that we need to understand God wants to do something special for us. Could you pray for me as I pray for you? <laughs> I want to have another word of prayer, and we're going to study together um, and see what the Lord has to share with us. Amen? Amen. Let us all kneel one more time for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, here I am before you, dependent wholly upon the merits of Jesus, dependent upon thy sufficiency to give me what I need and my family here. We are in bondage, Lord. But we are so thankful that the great physician now is near. We are thankful that you sent Christ to set the captives free. And if we would know the truth, the truth would make us free. You have given us a gift and truth of health reform to free us as a part of the preparatory work to stand before thy sight. I ask that you open up our minds and hearts. I ask that you'll be with me. Father, I am weak, inadequate, er, uh, erring. I I need your help, unqualified. But Lord, grant me thy spirit even now that thy people may hear your voice and not some weak man. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. It says, the health reform I was shown is a part of which angel's message? The health reform is a part of which angel? So it has a connection with the gospel. It says here that I was shown is, uh, it says, the health reform I was shown is part of the third angel's message and is just as closely connected with it as are the arm and what? With the human body. Let's read it all together. I saw that we as a people must make an advanced move in this great work. So us as a people, we have to make an advanced move in this great work. That's why this week I was so blessed by the sanitarium classes. (laughs) (laughs) Learning so much that trying to motivate to see that there is something special happening in heaven. And God wants all of us to understand this more and more fully. It goes on to say, ministers and people must act in concert. God's people are not prepared for what? God's people are not prepared for the loud cry 
is something relating to health reform. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, we need to see that. We're going to look at this. It says, they have a work to do for themselves, which they should not leave for God to do for them. He has left this work for them to do. Let's read this all together. It is an individual work. One cannot do it for another. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 14, please. Ezekiel chapter 14. Speaking of this health reform, I want to put in your mind more fully, by the grace of God, that we need to understand, number one, although as a group, it must be done. But first, we must embrace the idea of health reform personally. How? Personally. personally, individually, okay? Because at a place like this, do you know that it's very easy to eat healthily? <laughs> healthily. Is that right? All week, I already know what's going to be coming out of the kitchen. <laughs> you already know that the cobbler and, and the potatoes, yes, all of it is good. You don't have to worry about the wrong things being inside, amen? <laughs> but it's another thing when you're by yourself. Your head. It's another thing when you're by yourself or you're by yourself at a place that don't prepare food the way they prepare it here. And you're hungry. Yeah. And you had an eight. <laughs> and you say, well, the Lord understand we got to eat, right? <laughs> no, brothers and sisters. We got to understand. It's Ezekiel chapter 14. Let's read verse, uh, verse 14 all together. Now let's read verse 13 uh, first. Uh, it says, all together, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Verse 14, all together. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their what? Righteousness, saith the Lord. Let's read verse 20 altogether. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. When it comes to health as an individual, all of us are responsible for our own tongue for our own mouth, for our own experience. Are you with me? <laughs> that your experience, far as what you do regarding your body, you must make up in your mind that by the grace of God, I am not going to be moved by what everything else is going on around me. Amen? <laughs> we have to understand that this is an individual work. It goes on to say, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can see that much better? Yes. Uh, even though I'm right here, I can too. <laughs> All right, this is good. All right. All right. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Gluttony is the prevailing sin of this age. Lustful appetite makes slaves of men and women, and because their intellects and stupefy their moral sensibilities to such a degree that the sacred elevated truths of God's word are not appreciated. Let's read this all together. The lower propensities have what? Amen. When someone's in slavery, they're under what? Rulership. They're under control. They're under bondage. And if we are going to make that exodus, there must be an exit physically. There must be an exit physically so that the exit and exodus can be done spiritually. It's all one and the same. It's all together. God wants us to understand that we need to see that right now, the majority of us, perhaps all of us, I can't speak for everyone, we are controlled by the lower nature. You have stumbled at the health reform. It appears to you to be a what? Now, what does she mean by that? We're in Sabbath school, so I'm, uh, I was trying to be reminded that we're in class, so it's not just preaching, so I need to ask questions. <laughs> All right, what does it mean, the needless appendix? 
Add, we'll add on. Well, what what this typically when a person um, is having inflammation and problems with their appendix, typically when you go to the doctor, what takes place, Dr. Grievous? They say what? Surgery. They say cut it. Now, why do they say cut it? Did God create the appendix? That means that does God create and give us something that's not needful? But in their mind, what do they think? <laughs> it's a needless organ or it's a needless part. And therefore, guess what they do? They get rid of it. But we're not talking about an appendectomy, are we? <laughs> what we're talking about, health reform. Question is this morning, in your mind, is it a needless appendix? Well, just like we learned last night, what we say out of our mouth doesn't determine if we really believe that. Amen? We got to look inside of our own hearts and look at our life experience and say, have I really taken this seriously? Have I really embraced it? Because this place is to prepare us to have a wonderful experience, a sweet experience. It goes on to say, it is not so, it is a part of the truth. So is it optional? No, it's not optional. It says, this place is among those subjects which set forth the preparatory work to meet the events brought to view by the message. Among them, it is what? So it says, its place is among those what? Subjects which set forth what type of work? So it's supposed to be preparing us for something. Now, what is it supposed to be preparing us for? If it's connected with that third angel, what great prominent event come with the third angel? We talked about this a few years ago. The loud cry is one. Turn me to Revelation uh, chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14. And loud cry and loud rain is correct. All of that is a part of the third angel, third angel's message. Uh, Revelation chapter 14, Revelation chapter 14, and we're going to pick up with that third angel in verse 9. Let's read that all together. Do we all have it? Amen. All together? And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, what will happen? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. We can stop there for now. So now, if it's preparing us to meet the events brought to view by the third angel, it's preparing us to either assist us to not receive the mark of the beast, or depending on our position, to receive what? The mark of the beast. To worship the beast, his image, and his mark. Now, some people may think, how? Well, think about it. You all don't have to raise your hand, because I know that the majority of us most likely are in here. Possibly. Well, I ask in a different way. How many people know anyone on drug medication? We'll keep it that way. <laughs> all right. Is the majority of the world on drug medication? Is it very, very inexpensive? Does it cost a lot of money? All right. So if a person is in or a person has some type of chronic disease or illness, the majority of the world and our church are depending upon what type of medication? Drug medication in order to survive and to live. If you got hypertension, if you have diabetes, you have osteoporosis, arthritis, fibromyalgia, all these different problems, the majority of the world have to pay. Have to pay to get drugs. Now, before that time comes, I wonder if we are going to have to come into a position where we are not dependent upon drug medication. Because how are you going to get your blood thinners if you can't buy and sell? How can you get, you, you get your insulin if you can't buy or sell? How can you pay your PCP, his money, if we can't what? There's something we need to better understand about health reform. Isn't it sweet? Amen. Amen. <laughs> now, if you look here, you see... NSL. Now, if I could do another one, I can throw up there 
In fact, I put it right here. I was thinking about this earlier. We're going to get rid of this one. Last night we were learning something, and I want to put this up here. What did that say? Remember, we've been learning something about this before. And this is the what? The beginning of the... Did it commence already? All right, so it commenced in 2020, but are we in 2020 right now? And we've already known and learned that the beginning of the end would only accelerate things to a what? National Sunday Law. Right? But recently, those of us who've been studying and those that have been here, that we've learned something about this, something here. Plus or minus. Then we learned this. Remember that? Plus or minus. So if we're looking here and we recognize that National Sunday Law is coming, then how long do we have to get the experience to really experience truly being true health reformers? How long do we have to truly get an experience of becoming medical missionaries? Because I read a statement, volume 762, that, that what has come? The time has come with how many members? Every member should take hold of what? You know why? Because it's time for Jesus to soon judge the living. It's time for Jesus to soon begin to prepare somebody to be in a position to stand when he stands. But my question is, can you stand without health reform? We might have made it too big. That says uh, why they have opportunity. But that's okay. Let's read this all together. All together. As religious aggression subverts the liberties of our nation, those who would stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions. For their own sake, individual, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to what four things? Disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. Now, I'm saying, and I'm going to share with you, we have opportunity to 2025, plus or minus. And it says here we should become intelligent to what things? How many things? What's the first one? Or dis ease. All right, what's the next one? Causes. Causes. Prevention. And what? Cure. Let's keep reading. Though, and those who do this will what? A field of labor. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them who will need help, not only among those of our own faith, but what? Of those who what? Do you know right now, the world is looking for relief. As we're learning this week, God has given us this gift of health reform to relieve suffering. To show it as a gift of love to man, to show it to us, but many of us have not embraced that gift. Have not experienced the results of it. But do you know what is coming? If it's talking about religious aggression, when is religion ever supposed to be aggressive? So in order for you to have aggressive religion, it must be united with what? Force or the state. So this statement here is talking about a time of a national Sunday law. So the period of time that we have to get prepared to get an experience is going to be at this time when the Sunday law is going to pass. And God says, while we have opportunity, we need to become how? Intelligent in regards to these things. My question is, how do we become intelligent in regards to disease, its cause, prevention, and cure? For my medical commissioners, what's the definition of disease?
All right. By God's grace, we all want to learn this. Uh, Ministry of Healing 127. Please write it down. Ministry of Healing 127. And I want you all to say it all together with me. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions which result from the violation of the laws of health. We're going to say it over and over again. This is so critical. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from the violation of the laws of health. Those who don't know it, are we beginning to see it? All right, let's say it again together. <laughs> Repetition. Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions which result from the violation of the laws of health. So simply, disease is a result of violating natural law. So if we don't become intelligent in regards to disease, we need to understand what? If we want to know the cause of disease, what's the cause of disease? Violation of what? Law, the laws of health, physical law, laws of nature, natural law. If we want to learn to prevent disease, let's say now, by God's grace, praise the Lord, you got off that uh, drug medication. <laughs> but we don't want to go back, amen? Because <laughs> what got us in the first place, got us in trouble, is that we went in harmony with what? Law and the mercy of the physician, blessings upon us. Amen? amen? But then, if you have disease, praise the Lord, the great physician is near. <laughs> He's at the mercy seat. And there's mercy, even though we don't deserve it. Amen? And if you want to find a cure, by God's grace, come in harmony with what? Natural law. We must come in harmony with natural law. But my question is, how do we begin to understand natural law? How do we begin to study natural law? How do we see natural law? Through nature? Okay, all right. Any more? Paul said, I would have not known sin, but by the, I wouldn't have not known lust, except the law I said, thou shalt not covet. So we need to be able to see law in order to actually see what it is, so that we can begin to make the decision to come in harmony with it. Amen? Turn me to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. If we want to be able to see the law, I want to ask you a question. In the sanctuary, if you wanted to see the law, could you see it from the outer court? No. Where was the law? So was the law inside the sanctuary or outside the sanctuary? All right. So you must go and open up that temple. You must open up that sanctuary and go inside the sanctuary so that you can see what? The law. In the heavenly sanctuary, in heaven, when the temple of God was open in heaven, John was able to see what? The law. So that law was inside the sanctuary or outside of the sanctuary? It was inside of the sanctuary. And do you know, if you want to see natural law, I wonder where you must go. Inside the sanctuary. But which temple? Which temple? The body temple. Are you with me? I did a little fast last time. I said, let me slow down. That we must understand, we see the law in opening up the body temple in the study of anatomy and physiology. Amen? Amen. Think about it. The body is made of 70% water. Is that right? And by the way, we, we, there's several acronyms, but I like using God's plan. Amen. <laughs> You got creation, start new, and recreate. You got all kind of them coming out now. Uh, but God's plan is an uh, acronym for the eight laws of health. How many laws? People trying to come up with all the, the many, many laws. Uh, they making up stuff. But the, uh, but if you study the body, it's from the study of anatomy and physiology. You learn that there are eight laws. All right, God's. Plan. All right, what does G stand for? All right. 
What does O stand for? Amen. All right. What does D stand for? Amen. My friend right here. What does S stand for? It's all right. Somebody, you can help them. All right. All right. What do P stand for? All right. What do L stand for? What do A stand for? No, it doesn't. It's sometimes temperate. You know, every now and then we can overeat. <laughs> every now and then we can, we can, it, it's all right. It, it's all right every now and then. Is that right? No, that's not right. And by the way, you were right. It's always temperate. <laughs> all right. All right. Always what? Temperate. The Lord's taking me in a different direction. All right. Uh, in. Nutrition. Nutrition. So the understanding of these laws here. Come as an understanding of an acquaintance with the physical body. Are you with me? But inspiration says that we are more intelligent in the use of lifeless machineries than the human body. Someone's your car get messed up or your computer get messed up or anything that you're working with. You can you can go and fix it. But we all need to become mechanics of the physical body. You need to understand how your body is made. You need to be more intelligent. You are your first doctor. Christ is our first doctor, but we work with him. <laughs> Amen. So we're supposed to work with Jesus to understand how the body actually work. If you had a car and you were not aware, we had to rent a vehicle. One of them vehicles is diesel, isn't it? So one of them is diesel. But most people use the regular unleaded gas. Is that right? Let's say you had no idea the type of gas that's supposed to go inside of the, uh, the machine. Will it affect how it functions? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say you get it, you just say, oh, it's just gas, it doesn't matter. Both, both of it is fuel. <laughs> and then it drinks, and if I put it in, what would happen if you put diesel fuel in regular electric gas a vehicle? It begins to malfunction. It begins to have problems. It begins to be at dis-ease. Things begin to take place inside of it that shouldn't happen. It's because there's an ignorance of what should go inside of it. There's the ignorance of how to take care of it. There's the ignorance of how it should run. Are you following me? But you and I need to understand, we need to begin to understand that the body of, of the, the temple of the Holy Ghost, we need to actually study physiology. We need to study anatomy and what? Physiology. And as you study it, like I was saying before, you begin to learn the body is 70% water. It's something as simple as that. And that when you see how the body is made, that to function, it needs how much water? Lots of water. A lot of water. You know that the hydration is something that I've, I've been looking at for a little while. And I've been learning more and more and more that the reason why God is saying that we need to continually and constantly put water in our body because we're constantly losing water. Every breath, you lose what? When you sweat, you lose when you use the restroom, you lose all the functions of the body utilizes water. So water, water, water. But that's the based on the understanding of how to, and praise the Lord. Yeah, yes, that's right. If I had one, I would drink one too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that's a blessing. Drink it. But there are other laws than just water. There are eight of them. And as you, we better understand the body, you begin to understand. You, wait, 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 wait. If I'm going to be intelligent in these things, then I must understand natural law. But if I'm going to understand natural law, I need to begin to study the body temple. And most of us do not know our bodies that way. Our doctors know them better than we do. And that's why we're so dependent upon them. God did not want seven Adventists to be so dependent. God did not want seven Adventists. He wants seven Adventists, each and every one of them, to be medical missionaries and as a lighthouse to the entire world. We were supposed to be free of sickness. We're supposed to be free of disease. We should not be bogged down like the rest of the world. But guess what? We're ignorant in how our body works. It says that God's law is written by his own finger upon what? Every nerve, every what? Muscle, every faculty which has been entrusted to man. 
So that law that he wrote with his finger in the most holy place, he also used that same finger and put it on your kidneys. There's a law written upon the stomach. There's a law written upon the tongue. There's a law written upon the brain. There's a law written. Have you read that law? That's my question. We know Exodus 20. We, we look at the law, but look, have we studied what God had wrote on your body? And when we start studying, we begin to see, you know what? I must come in harmony with this. Why? It's because God is trying to do something very, very special for us. It says here, all together, to make plain natural law and urge the obedience of it is the work that accompanies the third angel's message to prepare a people for the coming of the Lord. To make plain what? Party Arco. To make plain garlic. To make plain hydrotherapy. All of those are a part of it. Are you with me? Now, why am I bringing this out? Because most of us are more intelligent into the natural remedies, which are from God, which are the servants of nature, and their obedience has selected messages. But we're more intelligent into just taking something, whether encapsulated or a meal, than making plain natural law. And to urge the obedience of it is the work that accompanies the third angel's message. You know why? There's a reason. There's a reason. I was talking with somebody, and uh, he was having these troubles and sickness, and he was having all kinds of problems. And he came up, and first, I, as I talked to him, I'm trying to make sure it wasn't an emergency. <laughs> he was having some problems with his chest and different things like that. We took his blood pressure. Um, it was reasonable. It wasn't in stroke level or anything like that. And so I said, okay. So he was like, I, I need some help because I've been, been having some problems uh, with my blood pressure. And, and I began to start sharing with him, you know what, there's hope, my brother. I said, you know, God has a plan. <laughs> I said, and, and, uh, and if you would work with him, uh, he would do something very, 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 very special with you. I said, but he has a plan. And we, we need to work and cooperate with him. He said, he said okay. He said, uh, he said, I hear what you're saying. He said, so just tell me how much it's going to cost. And I was like, how much what going to cost? Throwing the plan? No, it's a free gift from God. <laughs> now, it did pay something. His life, he paid for it. But he grants it to us freely. But it's going to need your sacrifice. <laughs> he looked and said, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the pills. Where are the pills at? <laughs> <laughs> Where is the medication, young man? <laughs> And he said, I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, I just tell me what I'm supposed to take, how many times a day, and how many milligrams. And I was sitting there, and he's supposed to be aware of this message. And I was sitting there in my mind from that conversation. I was saying, I don't think we understand health reform. It's health reform. So there are reformations. There are changes that's to be done, amen, in all of us. And as we studied the body, how it's supposed to work, you recognize that there's a certain way we're supposed to be living, brothers and sisters. Amen. And then as I saw him, I said, Lord, help me to begin to reach the mind and to help him to understand that the cause of his hypertension, it was not because he was not taking garlic every day. <laughs> Alone. And by the way, garlic, party, alcohol, these things is part of the law of nutrition. Amen. The, law is, the law is trying to put the law in its rightful place. The devil has done this to us. All right. And so, so as I began to share with him, he's like, okay, I said, let, let's back up. I said, I want to begin to share with you that God has something special he wants to do with you. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I said, my brother, I said, please, I said, let me share something with you. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I said, my brother, God wants to bless you. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all that his commandments which I command thee this day, 
that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Verse 2, what does it say? And all these blessings shall come on thee, and what? Overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So, blessings come as a result of what? Dil diligently hearkening to what? The voice of the Lord thy God. Now, let's look at these blessings. It says they'll overtake you. When it means overtake you, that's like, I mean, it's just so many, just keep coming, they just keep coming, they just, they just keep coming. It goes on in verse 4. Let's read it all together. Blessed shall be the fruit of what? Thy body. So are these blessings manifested inside the body? It's a result of obedience. Amen? That time flew by. I, I see now how these brothers be feeling. <laughs> My brothers be feeling up here. <laughs> so uh, all these blessings. It says then, it says verse 8, it says the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and in all thy things thy hand to do. And he shall bless thee and in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But go to verse 15. What does that say? Verse 15 altogether. But it shall come to pass as thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these what? Curses. Now what do those curses look like? Verse 21. The Lord shall make the what? Pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. So what was the cause of the pestilence? Disobedience to what? Law. Let's keep reading. Verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a and with a fever and with a inflammation and with a what? Extreme burning and with the sore and with blasting and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Go with me to uh, verse 27. What does it say? The Lord will smite thee with a what? Of Egypt and with what? Hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids. Uh, and with the what? And with the what? Wherefore thou canst not be healed. Verse 28 altogether. The Lord shall smite thee with what? And with what? And with what? These are heart problems. So in the Bible, it's actually showing us and telling us that the reason why we in here too have some, many of these things. Is why? Because we're out of harmony with what? Law. Natural law. But we can't see the law because the sanctuary of the temple is closed to us. But we got to open it. Amen? We have to open it and begin to see how to take care of the most wonderful of all organisms, the human body. It's the best machine ever made. Do you know, brothers and sisters, that if God did not met, uh, uh, make us the way he did, one violation of law, we should be dead. It is because of the plan of redemption we're alive. When Adam and Eve sinned, they were supposed to drop dead eternally. But God put a place for their uh, more renovation. But do you know at that same tree, he put in more uh, uh, renovation for the physical body. And you know we're told that if Adam was not endowed with 20 times more vital vigor than we have today, that the human race would be extinct. We wouldn't even be here. Why? With the habits that we have. And I'm sorry to talk about this, talk like this. Listen to me, saints. We are cherishing things that we know we should not be doing. And then what's happening is we're becoming desensitized that it is even law. You say, oh, yeah, I'm doing, I'm busy, even us doing ministry. They're general and they're special. Sometimes you have to stay up doing the work of God. But we have turned the general work into special. And the special into general. And we're up late. We're up doing things we shouldn't be doing. We're up not in harmony. And then we're desensitized to see that we have to give an account in the day of judgment. And we look and say, oh, well, you know, well, you know, uh, God understands the difference. No, 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 no. The moral law and natural law, they're the same. Natural law is found in the moral law. <laughs> we were just looking at this all together. When you understand physiology in its truest sense, your drug bills will be what? Very much smaller. Isn't that sweet? Now, there's something about physiology. Like I told you before, the better you understand your body, then you begin to understand. Wait, 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 wait. The, the physicians and the doctors, they look and they say, okay, this is what's going on inside your body. And they have these man-made concoctions, as we've been learning this week. 
And they have looked and said, you know what? We want the body to do this. And they give this chemicalized drug to actually help the body physiologically achieve what it needs to have so you can stay alive. And they said, we'll take the best of the two evils. There may be side effects. There may be problems that happen after that. But they said, look, you're still alive, okay? But listen, but the better, <laughs> the better you understand after a law, guess what you begin to understand? Physiology, because see, you understand anatomy physiology so you can see law. And then as you understand that, you understand disease, the cause, prevention, and the cure. So now it says when you do that, the less and less you will use drug medication and then altogether. And finally, you will what? Cease to deal out drugs at all. We ready for the Sunday law. We ready for the crisis. We're ready in a position to be able to give this saving health to the entire world. Because if we can't stand violating natural law, how is the rest of the world and our brethren and the rest of the world going to be able to stand? They're not going to be able to stand. It says the physician who depends upon drug medication in his practice shows that he does not understand the what? Delicate machinery of the human organism. But like we've been learning this week, God wants to teach us. He wants to educate us. He wants to help us to get this experience. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. That sounded a little better. I already know that this is a subject <laughs> that touches. Why? Because we love to eat. <laughs> we love to do what we want to do. All together. We should educate ourselves not only to live in harmony with the laws of life, but to teach others the better way. Uh, the, the laws of health. Laws of life, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You're right. uh, but to teach others the better way. Many, any of those who all together profess to believe the special truths for this time are what? Lamentably ignorant with the regard to health and temperance. Now, who out of all the people in Alabama right now believe in the special truths for this time? Those sitting in this room. Of all the people in Alabama, that's where we are, who knows the special truths of this time? Who? Those in this room. If you, you, I mean, do you, do you believe in special truths at this time? You believe we got a third angel? You believe we need to take it to the whole world <laughs> to prepare people to stand? I hope so. That's what we've been studying, right? That's, that's, what, that's what we've been looking at. But there's a connection with your health. There's a connection with your health. That's all the job of the medical minister is to do in harmony with the gospel minister. And so God is trying to help us to see that we must make advancement here. And we must take it just as seriously as our spiritual condition because it has a bearing upon our spiritual nature. The, our, our entire, all our families. That is not non-essential, saints. So God is trying to help us to do this. Look what it says. They need to be what? Educated, line upon line, what? Precept upon precept. So that means they need school. You need classes. And it can't mean it's not enough. Those few classes don't do it. This needs to be happening regularly and organized. It's supposed to be in our churches. But if we can't do it there, we need to organize schools ourselves. Amen. At our homes, at the outposts. What, what, what we're doing, we need to be doing this by the grace of God. Why? Because this must take place. It says the subject must be kept what? Fresh before them. They said, man, you talked about this last year. <laughs> You talked about this a year before. Nothing different. Same slide. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> Say, you know why? <laughs> it must be kept before you. <laughs> You're going to see it next year. <laughs> All right, it says here, look what it says. Well, 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 by God, Lord willing, <laughs> if we're here. <laughs> but if we're not, be faithful. <laughs> All right, look, look what it says. It says, this matter must not be passed over as what? Non-essential, a needless appendix. For nearly how many? Every family needs to be stirred up on the question. So guess what they have the young man up here doing? Trying to stir you up. Can God help us? Yes. Says he wants to help us. Yes. Listen, it is so serious. But we had not even hit the serious part yet. All together. In order to be prepared for the judgment, it is necessary to mention the law of God, the law of the seat of character in the judgment. Do you know? The reason why the Lord is trying to help us to understand 
the issue of our experience at this preparation time is because at the National Sunday Law, what happens regarding the, gu the judgment in heaven? They talked about it last night. The bells. What happens? Because I last night I was listening too, and it was a, it was it was too it was too quiet. What happens regarding far as his ministration as a high priest in the most holy place at the National Sunday Law? It, it, he, he commits, he goes from the judgment of the Dead. to the judgment of the Dead. so the issue is that when this happens here on earth, there's something taking place where? And in order for you and I to be prepared to stand true to God during the investigative judgment, we must be in harmony with law. With what? I took it down, but uh, to keep the law. So, but does that include nature's laws? Yes. But are we in harmony with nature's laws? We're not prepared to stand. Not one of us. Not me. But I praise God that He's still at the mercy seat. Yes. We need to repent. You know? Do you know that I just? As much need to repent and weeping because anyone that even eats between meals, it crucified Christ the first. People look like, no, 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 not just, not just one uh, chip. I know my, di my digestion still may be going. I, I, I'm a, I know it's been, I, I, I'm going to just eat a little bit. It hangs them back on the tree. He died for our experience. So that law, God needs us to see that in our physical habits, there is just as much as a sin to violate nature's law, to violate the law of God. <laughs> Can Jesus help us? Yeah. Does he want to help us? I believe he's helping us right now. It says here, <clears throat> read this all together. The transgression of what? Physical law. Is the transgression of what? Uh, our creator is Jesus Christ. He is the author of our being. He is the author of what? Physical law. And moral law. And the human being who is what? Careless, reckless of the habits and practices that concern his physical life and health does what? Sin against God. So we can't be prepared to stand true to God when he commences with the judgment of the living, if prior to that point, we have become intelligent in these things. Prior to that point, we have begun to get that experience. That there needs to be some commitments as far as on our physical experience that we must play, pay more close attention to the physical habits as we're working with the physician in the heavenly sanctuary. Because that priest is a physician. <laughs> And as you apply the plan, you begin to see the beauty of that man. Because the beauty of the prescription reveals the beauty of the physician. Amen. When you begin to study your body, the laws of life, and apply what he tells you to do, the simple remedy, that's what you start seeing. Who, this is so wonderful. I feel so great. This is so beautiful. And then the mind gets clear. And you can commune with God, and it's so much sweeter. And it's so much better. And you can hear him all the better. And he assists us in doing this work. Amen. It says here that the work is to prepare. It says it's not preparing a people to obtain a what? Healthy experience, which will what? Stand the test of judgment. Which will what? Stand the test of it will stand the test of judgment. God wants us to stand the what? Test of judgment. God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare a people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. This is the purpose in which we establish and maintain. I'm going to skip to this one. The what? Sanitariums. To carry out and do this training and medical missionary work. God wants us to have this experience. All of this is so that we can what? Stand true to God during the investigative judgment. I want to finish here. This is so serious. Let's read this all together. Sanctification how many understand its full meaning? So she's asking the question here. How many understand? Do we need to be sanctified? Amen. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy what? Word. It says the thoughts need to be what? Purifying. What 
Might not men and women have been had they what? Realize that the treatment of the body has what? Everything to do with the vigor and purity of mind and heart. So when it comes to us getting a purified spiritual experience, we need to realize that there is a strong bearing upon our physical habits to achieve that pure moral experience in mind and heart. Turn with me to um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And when you get to verse 23, would you please say amen? First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. This is what God is interested in. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Do we all have it? Amen. All together. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and body. Be preserved what? Blameless until when? God is interested, and I'm highlighting the body. That he wants to bring us to a place by his grace and power, strength that he has made available to each and every one of us, that we may be preserved blameless in our bodies. Blameless in our physical experience. Blameless so that we can be able to stand. Amen? God wants us to have this experience by his grace. It says, may the Lord increase our faith and help us to see that he desires how many? All to become acquainted with his what? And with what? The mercy season in the most holy place. We learned last night Christ is about to leave the most holy place. So in the midst of before he, he leaves, he desires that all would become acquainted with what? His ministry of and with what? That's the entire world. By saving health among all nations. God wants us to have this experience. The world is perishing from an ignorance of, a, of the natural and moral law, brothers and sisters. They don't know. But who's going to give it to them by his grace? He wants us to do it. And what is the purpose of all of it? He wants a relationship with us. It says here, when I, when I came across this statement, I said, Lord, this is so sweet. I read this years ago, and I said, help me to understand this right here. Let's read this all together. If Christians will keep the body in subjection and bring all their appetites and passions under control of enlightened conscience, filling it a what? A duty that they owe to God and to their neighbors to obey the laws which govern health, they will have the what? Blessing of physical and mental vigor. Do you know what you need? You need a blessing. Your mind needs a blessing. Your bodies need a blessing. A blessing from the result of obedience. To do what? Why? Why, why, why he wants to give us this blessing? What? They will have, it says here, they will have what? Moral power to what? Engage in the warfare against Satan. So Satan says, I have a short time to keep, to keep them from tapping into that nuclear bomb. He said, no, 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 no. They will not be able to war against me because they will never have the blessing of physical and mental vigor to bring them to a place where they will have that moral power to overcome every one of my temptations. Why? Because they're slaves. If I can keep them slaves in their physical habit, keep coming to the camp meeting. Keep studying. But he's saying, look, but if you begin to learn, I need to pay more attention to the treatment of this body, to study the laws of life, to study how it functions and operates. You are becoming a mechanic of your own body. <laughs> then look what happens. It says they will have moral power to engage in what? The warfare against Satan and in the name of him who conquered appetite in their behalf, they what? They may be more than conquerors on what? Their own individual account. Do you want help from God? I've been saying, Lord, help me 
to tap into your strength and power, to live more in harmony with your precious laws of life. Galatians chapter 3, book. to be our last text here. What is it all for, brothers and sisters? We can't keep the law. <laughs> we need help, don't we? <laughs> but what is the purpose of nature's laws? What is the purpose of God wanting us to study the body and begin to see how beautifully and how curiously we were wrought and made? What is his purpose in actually doing that inside of us? He's trying to do something. He wants us to see something very beautiful. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, and we want to read verse 24 all together. Wherefore the law was our to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by what? He wants us to understand natural law because it brings us to him. He wants a relationship. It's about fellowship. I had the statement up there. It says that the brain nerves is the only medium a communication whereby heaven can affect our inmost life. Another place to bring out that hence is Satan's work to, to, to damage and degradate this body so that we can't get this connection with God. By God's grace, as we leave here, before we leave here, I believe we need to make a recommitment to glorifying God, not only in our spirit, but in our what? which are his. I mean, it brings me to tears. I, I was like, Lord, and I'm closing. Look at this. I said, Lord, help me to see this. It says, it says, God is the owner of the whole man. Soul, body, and spirit are his. God gave his only begotten son for the body as well as the soul. And our entire life belonged to God to be consecrated to his service. When God died on the cross, when he sent his son and Jesus died, he died for your physical body as well. You know how valuable you are? You know how precious you are? And Satan wants to be ignorant of it so that we would treat it in the wrong way. Have we made mistakes? But is Christ still at the mercy seat? Do you want to recognize and acknowledge that a commitment, a recommitment, and if you have, some of us probably hadn't made a commitment, to each become health reformers. I'm not talking about, okay, yeah, that's medical missionary over there. All of us should be medical missionaries. We all should have that experience. We all should have that knowledge. Why? There's an entire world to reach that are perishing for a lack of disinformation that we have sitting at our feet. This book, Health for Living. I want to encourage every person to go through this book along with your ministry of healing. This was, con this was constructed, put together for the purpose of training medical missionaries. How many people come to me, man, I'm trying to go to a medical missionary place. I want to get trained. This book trained me. This is uh, health instructions relating to health for living. For short, health for living. Health for living and ministry of healing. Take it. If you can't get there sometimes, especially with what's going on right now, people can't get certain places and get trained, do you know the Holy Spirit will train you? We were blessed and we have a, a training we're developing that we have. We have a sanitarium that we're doing there at Eden Way. And soon, as was mentioned already, we're seeking to get this building up so that we can have training on a larger scale. Please support and see what we're doing. We're trying to get in position to reproduce this by God's grace. But until then, you can take this with the Holy Spirit, take ministry of healing, and say, Lord, teach me. And you don't have to wait on somebody to give you permission. Intelligent. Don't go do hydrotherapy. You hadn't read on hydrotherapy. Don't run in and say, oh yeah, let me get some to you. First, get an experience. Practice that thing. Yes, ma'am. And then, say, the Holy Spirit will teach you and train you. All of us need to be in that experience right now. Do y'all see? We don't have long. 
God wants us to get this experience by his grace. Do you recognize that we need to take up the temperance pledge afresh? Do you acknowledge that? Do you want to be a health reformer? Yeah. Do we need to become a health reformer? You know that a seven-day Adventist is a health reformer, a real one. And to be honest with you, upon this subject, most of us are almost seven-day Adventists. I'm thankful that he's still at the mercy seat. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you for speaking to us, your children. Thank you that we have a knowledge that you are still ministering on our behalf. And that in the little time we have left, we can leave this place with a new commitment to glorifying you in our bodies. We've made many mistakes, dear God. Satan has seduced and tempted. We have flirted and played. And as a result, many of us are afflicted right now. But Lord, it does not have to be because at the end of the Day of Atonement, the congregation is not only sinless, but sickless. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh the disease of the world away. Help us, Lord, to see this clearly. Help us to see, Lord, it's going to require our wills. It's going to require a battle. It's going to require much prayer, perseverance. And the object to gain is that we may know you, that we may have a close, intimate, personal relationship with you. Father, please do this with every soul here, that we may recognize that you are there to help us every step of the way. Forgive us for our mistakes, our sins, those things individually bring to our minds of what is violating thy laws that you wrote upon our bodies. Help us to study anatomy and physiology. Help us to see and to be careful on how to take care of the body that was purchased by the sweet blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. Keep us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.